This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. We are navigating the journey, and I am Marcia Joyner. Navigating the journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices in life and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about what we want to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live our lives and to communicate about the kind of care we want and what we don't want. This is especially important when you are a member of the military family and living in Hawaii and having moved year after year and saying goodbye to old friends, familiar places, and meeting new people, new customs, new cultures. One cannot envision what it's like being in constant state of flux, move after move after move. In fact, we moved four times in my last pregnancy, which was in the dark ages. Now, in Hawaii, you're going to stay put for about three years or more. Can you imagine attempting to find a house when the street names you can't pronounce and the highways all begin with K? Soldier to soldier, a real estate firm, as just as the name implies, comforting, soldier to soldier. It's like someone who knows what your life is like, all the moves you've made, all the misgivings, saying goodbye to your children's classmates. And our guest today is Celeste Thomas, a veteran of 20 years of service who truly understands military relocation. His company is Soldier to Soldier, a Hawaii realty company, full service real estate company on the island of Oahu, and I love his motto. If you're not happy with me and my service, just fire me. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I love it. So, hello, Celeste. It is so wonderful to meet you at last. At I hear, last. I always last. see you on the television all the time. If you don't like me, just fire me. I, that is a great idea. You know, the thing about it is um, that line almost got taken out at the very last minute when I ran my first TV commercial. And the TV station at that time, they kind of ran it before their crew. And they were like, no, no, tell them don't take it out. So I kept it in. And now that it's literally become something bigger than I ever thought it would be. You know, I, yes. I think people just like the, honestly, they don't like to be held hostage, if I may use that right. term loosely, to a contract or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad I kept it in. So tell me about Celeste. Where, have you, where are you from? How long have you been in the military? Tell us about you and how you came to be soldier to soldier. Well, I'm a, I'm a veteran of 20 years, as you stated during the intro. I'm originally from South Carolina, but I haven't been to South Carolina. Oh, where in South Carolina? Florence, South Carolina, really Lake City, but nobody knows Lake City, so I always use the term Florence, but it's just about 20 miles west of um, Florence. Uh, about 60 miles east of Columbia. A lot of people are familiar with that's, Columbia. That's inland. Right, right. Inland, South Carolina. Right, right. Yeah, we have, we know about the sea islands, but nothing about inland. South right, Carolina. right. <laughs> so, so that you were in the military, for, you said, for 20 years? I was in the military for 20 years. Joined originally in the National Guard, got out, went to college, said, you know what? Didn't, be honest with you, didn't feel like looking for a job. Said, oh, you know what, I'm already doing this military thing. Just, just keep it going and see how long <laughs> it takes me. <laughs> 20 years later, it's like, I guess it's time to move on to something different. Uh, got out, retired, only three years ago. Um, so my company is very, very new. Um, cause based off the state of Hawaii law, you have to be in real estate for three years in order to open your own firm. So literally, the day I was testing, my TV commercial was coming out the very next day. So I had no options but to pass that test. Yes. So I burned all bridges to say, hey, you will pass that test. You must pass that test. So that's how we ended up with the, with the company. The name in itself, I was looking for something fronting to attract the military client because I, I knew the military. Right. 20 years, joined when I was 17, retired, did all the moves. I knew the military. Oh, 
Absolutely. So there's a comfort level of making them comfortable with well, me that, and my service. That's what it implies, that comfort level. Uh, like I said, we had moved, we, well, uh, my husband retired a long time ago, before you were born, in fact. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but the idea of moving and moving and moving, and just when the children make friends in school, it's time to move again. And so what, what I got from just watching the commercial and your name was that comfort level. I would have been really comfortable had we had a realtor that understood the, all of the issues that military people go through in all of these moves right. and what you're looking for. Right, because it's a difference. Yeah, there is a difference. Something as simple as showing up on time. Yes. <laughs> Everybody knows the traffic. To me, there's no excuse to show up late. You know the traffic's bad. So if you got to leave an hour early and go sit in a coffee shop to get to appointment, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. One, because the military ingrains it into you. And, and I'm very respectful of people's time. If I say 6 o'clock and we agree on 6, then guess what? I should be there at 6 o'clock. Uh, yeah. No later than 6 o'clock, for sure. So that's just my life and the way I live it and, I, and, and the company values. So now you've been in business for how long? I've been in business on my own with Soldier to Soldier for a little over a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. But I've been in real estate on this island for about three years. I did a lot of um, flipping houses in Oklahoma when I was stationed in Oklahoma. And I still have a lot of rentals back there. What do you mean by flipping a house? Well. Buying a foreclosure, fixing it up, and then selling it for a profit. Oh, okay. Now, you are in this market, which is crazy. Yeah, tell me about it. What do you, how do you take a, a military active duty, which we know don't get paid a lot, and we look at the cost of these houses, how do you wrap your head around that, taking this person into that. I mean, my first home, when I first bought here, oh man, I'm not gonna age myself here. I think it was 1998, 2000 maybe. It was a little three bedroom, two and a half bath condo in Milwaukee, Knob Hill, matter of fact. And I'm like, 146,000 for a condo? You know, the house I can get in South Carolina or Oklahoma for <laughs> the whole state. Yeah. Yeah. The whole state. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, man, that's expensive. But you know, I, I made the jump, um, bought the house, and I was literally sitting in um, Iraq. And one of my lieutenants at the time came through, you know, with the Hawaii magazines. I said, hey, let me take a look at that magazine you had done. And I'm opening it. Man, that house is in my neighborhood. Three hundred some thousand dollars now. So I called home and said, hey, call our realtor. So I called our realtor, say, hey, how much you can get for our house? She told me, I said, sell it. I'll be gone in PCS when I get back anyway. And from then on out, I, I stopped looking at price and started looking at the market. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing. It's not necessarily about the price. And a lot of people, when they come here, especially people that are used to coming from Alabama or the mainland, you're not used to coming from New York or a high, expensive state. These prices are like, whoa, what? 2500 for rent for a two-bedroom yeah. condo? I mean, so if you look at value versus price, then I think it makes a huge difference. It is, I was just, now tell me about this military and the VA, is it VA loan? VA loans. What is a VA loan? A VA loan is, is offered to a veteran that is a no money down, you can put money down if you want to, um, loan is offered them in order to purchase a home. So if you're doing no money down, that's a big monthly note. Yes, it does. It does raise your your payments, of course, if you're not putting any money down. But what I found out in Hawaii is, with the appreciation rate being where you're getting your money from, you know, it's well worth that appreciation. And I've had I've had clients that literally bought last year and are selling this year, and they're walking away with forty, fifty thousand dollars in a year with mm -hmm. no money down. That's not a bad deal. Now that's not everywhere, but here in Hawaii. Uh, it's very familiar. Of course, if you buy in the right place, there's still places in Hawaii that, you know, you can put 20% down and still be in a bad position. So, like they always say in real estate, it's all about location, location, location. location. Okay. Well, so now we look at people that are, I, I hate to say homeless, yeah, that's the right word, where we have three and four families in one place because 
everybody's working, but they can't pay $2,500 a month. Right. Rent. So how do you handle those people, or do you, or are you exclusively with soldier to soldier? Nope, I, we, we help everybody. I, I get calls all the time. Hey, are you only military? Like, no, no, we, we help everybody. Now, the, again, that was the gamble when I came up with that name. Mm -hmm. When I put that name out there, most people are going to think it's exclusive military. But we've helped tons of local families that are not military. And sometimes they try to even justify, like, hey, you don't have to justify, you don't have to be military. Hey, you know, my great, 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 great granddaddy's <laughs> cousin was in the <laughs> army. <laughs> so I'm like, no, you don't have to justify, we help more than military. Uh -huh. But military is our focus, because uh, like they said, you got to have a niche in something, and military is our niche. So, in apply, applying for the military, for the VA, now, if you, let's say I bought a house oh, 10 years ago on a VA loan, mm -hmm. now, and I still have it, and now I want to buy something else, can I use the VA loan again? Or is it only for one property? No, you can use it again, but of course there's a, a higher percentage you would pay. So in other words, say if you bought a home in Alabama for a hundred and some thousand dollars on your VA loan, mm -hmm. then you move to Hawaii, and your VA eligibility here is 721,050. So you literally just subtract that 100,000 from that 721,050, and that's what you have allotted to buy a home. Ah, okay. So you still have your eligibility. You still, still can have your that. eligibility, yeah. even if you're still paying for that other yes. house. Yes, I have a client right now. As a matter of fact, they just talked to the lender, and that's what he's doing. He's, he's has a house in Texas. We're buying another house here in um, Pearl City. And it's uh, what's the top number? Seven twenty-one fifty is the limit, but there's something called a VA jumbo loan. So anything over seven twenty-one fifty, all the way up to a million dollars, you can buy but you pay, you pay the difference of 25%. So in other words, say if the limit was, the limit 721.50, right? Say if it's 800,000, so the difference between 800,000 and 721.50, you pay that 25% difference, which is still great, which is still way less than paying 20% down for a conventional loan. Yeah, by quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> so we're in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Except, right. Now, what we mentioned about soldier to soldier and a comfort level and understanding what the military goes through. Tell us, I'm, I, I do know, you know, uh, I'm one of those that goes back to the Civil War, I've had right. every generation in the military and having moved a lot of my life. But a lot of people don't understand and, and so I can't take it for granted right, that, everybody that, does. that everybody does. So uh, what we should do is go to break, and when we come back, tell us about the comfort, what, what we're talking about in reaching out to the military and offering a comfort level, okay? okay? This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm Carol Mon Lee, Think Tech Hawaii's Volunteer Chief Operating Officer and occasional host, and this is Minky. For the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online, web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech will run only during the month of November, and you can help. Please donate what you can so Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, www.thanksforthinktech.cosvox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by ThinkTech Hawaii's 30-plus weekly shows, thank you, mahalo, and shishe for your generosity. And we're back. Our guest today is Celester Thomas, and he is the principal broker and owner of the real estate company Soldier to Soldier. And we're talking about the vast moves and 
upsets and adjustments that the military makes over the course of their hitch. So tell us, when we talk about your company providing the comfort level, what does that mean exactly to people coming to Hawaii for the first time and looking for a home? What, what is it that, that one soldier provides to another? That means understanding the little things that most people may, may take for granted. And as I kind of mentioned earlier, just showing up on time is like a great first step. <laughs> and not being on what they so-called Hawaii time. Yeah. Um, showing up on time, understanding the sometimes discomforts of moving with kids or moving over without a spouse, you know, and, and needing a sense of maybe a car ride from the airport or, or showing different restaurants and stuff like that. Um, all of my agents are, are prior military. I do have one or two that are not, but they're married to military. So they're quickly so learning. The same. Yeah, it's so they're the quickly same. learning that, the same. hey, this military life is a little different it than different, civilian yes. life. <laughs> so it, it's just understanding, understanding the why, understanding the moves, and, and being able to talk a language. Because when I can talk your language, then it, it provides a certain level of comfort. So when, do, when people are transferred into Hawaii, do they still have TLA trans, trans what is TLA? The TLA, TLA benefits? Which, yes, yes. I, I know when all the wars were going on. Um, yeah, well, we came during Vietnam, so, you know. Right, so right. So we had all of those. But now, well, this is still a war. Afghanistan is yes, still a war. It, it is. When well, it was, it's not declared a war, is it? <laughs> I guess that's what you want to call it. <laughs> Come away from home, it's a war. <laughs> it's a war, it's a war, yeah. <laughs> Um, I know before, and they changed the requirements. It used to be 60 days. Right. When you fly on Island, your TLA benefit would last you 60 days. So you literally had 60 days to go find a house. Yeah. Now they've dropped that all the way down to 30 days. So when families fly in, they don't have a lot of time to mess around. It's a little different here than finding a place. You go to the mainland, you go to one place, say, can I see all these houses? And they show them to you. Here, you may have to call Craigslist, you may have to call this individual company, that individual company. So it's, a, it's a, a, an adjustment that military people have to have. So a lot of times, people contact me on my website and say, hey, can you help me find a house? And I do it, not, our, not for profit or anything, just because I understand that they're not going to understand where to go, just because it's different. Of course. You know, when you can't pronounce the street name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. You look at the word, like, like, that, that's... Doesn't sound like what that looks like. Yeah. <laughs> and a word like ha ha ula. It's like all those A's, you know. So just just reading the street names becomes an issue. Exactly. If, if they tell you where they found a house, where you found a house, and you try to get them to see it, and they can't find it. Well, at least Google Maps is good. Yeah. Yes, sometimes. I get Iwa Beach all the time. I'm yeah. looking for a house in Iwo Beach, a Capoli. Yeah. I've gotten Capoli a lot, and I'm like, Capoli? Where's that at? Then they started describing things. I was like, oh, Capoli, oh, you yeah. got it. Yeah. <laughs> I had to think about that one. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. So that one threw you off. Yes. <laughs> yes. But these are actual events at Capoli, Iwa. <laughs> Iwa, I, I figured that one out, but Capoli, I had to think about yeah, that. Yeah, I've had that call. I'm looking for a house in Capoli. Okay. And I'm like, you're on the right island? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, I guess that that's, to me, that would be the biggest issue was just the language. And what about the food, all the different foods that, and restaurants that they're new to, they're on TLA. Where do they have a special place for TLA or can you stay anywhere else? There's a few places, and you got to actually apply to have your places considered a TLA place. There's normally a couple of apartment buildings downtown, that, and there are a couple of hotels. You have to literally apply, because I tried to apply for a couple of single-family homes, and they're like, no, we don't do single-family homes. It has to be yeah, an apartment, apartment yeah. building, and you have to own at least a couple of units in it, so it can't just be one. Then, of course, you have your hotels and stuff there on Schofield Barracks and, and on bases and stuff like that, but there's a few places. Yeah. When we came, it was in Waipahu, and it was a whole apartment building, and everybody in the building was on TLA. And this was, of course, the dark ages. 
when we got yesterday's news the next morning. I'll tell you how long ago that was, but that's, like I said, during Vietnam. And every day you had to say where you looked for a house, where you, yeah. you had to every day account for what you were doing in terms of looking for a place to stay. And because it was during the war and active duty, I was pretty much on my own. And yes, Iwo Beach. Yeah. Yes. E and Iwo Beach looking more places. Beach, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that was close to where right. we were in, in Waipahu. Yeah. So those are the kinds of things I remember about that those early days. That home search. That home search, yes. I know I initially came over without my family. And of course, oh, you give me 60 days? Me and a friend of mine that I stayed with, I actually met at the house, and we're like, man, we got 60 days. You know, we're going down to the beach every day. We don't even look for no house. We'll worry about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Little did we know, 59 days came fairly quickly. Yeah, like, whoa, we don't have yeah. a place to stay. We need to find somewhere. So that's my first Hawaii experience as looking for housing. Mm -hmm. And so now you help them with, do they contact you before they arrive? You know, the fun thing, a lot of parents contact me. You know, they worry about their young son or daughter. Hey, you know, I, I saw your website. You know, my son is flying to Hawaii next month. You know, can you help him find a place? I've gotten, I may get 10 or 15 calls a month. Now, just from parents. Do you do rentals as well as selling? Yes, we do. We do property management. I do have a, a property management division that um, works out of Capitol also that does property management. So, so that if, like you said, a parent calls, uh, finds your web page, and they call from the mainland, and my peop my young ones are moving to Hawaii, so you can have something ready by the time they get there. Is yes. that? Uh, hey, that's that's. You meet them at the airport and say, hey, what? Exactly, because I, I know the area, and I, I know parents don't want to put their kids in, you know, Certain bad location. This is paradise, but paradise has some areas that, you know, not so paradise. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll deal with that. But So you you meet them at the airport, do you? Or uh, do they have the families that, they used to have a family that was dedicated to meeting you at the airport and kind of. Yeah, like USO? Yeah, a lot of times. Well, no, fun. these were. Well, that was like I said. The, this was the Air Force, and. Uh, but they still do that. They still yeah. do that. When I when I first flew over, they called a sponsor. I guess sponsor, it was the same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. And the sponsor will pick you up from the airport, right. help you with your bags and stuff, and then kind of get you settled in mm -hmm. to find a place. Yeah. Do they still do that? Yes, they still do it. What? And that's and that's on the individual unit to do it. Oh, okay. So now, what branch of service were you in? I was in the Army for 20 years. Oh my. The Army. The Army. <laughs> what, what did you do? I started off as a, a field artilleryman, and then um, I became an L&O officer for Australia uh, my last couple of years. Um, and What's that? It's like the, I linked the U.S. military with the Australian Army. Oh. So I traveled back and forth from Australia my last year uh, a lot. So those are kind of my ties to some of my friends that I have in Australia. Oh, that's wonderful. So they, you still maintain those relationships? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I have a, I have a, a, some Australian friends down there now that own a gym, and um, Capole and Kailua call me in town fencing. Capole. Capole. And Kailua uh, that own a gym call me in town fitness. I mean, so I, I go to still go to Australia sometime and, and get invited to their house for dinner and Christmas and. Stuff like that. I'm very, you know, good friends with their mom and dad also. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. So that you still, and that was by, wait a minute, you said you linked the American Army with, with the, the Australian, Australian Army. Army. Yes. How, how does that, how, did, how do you do that? How do you make that connection? What, what's the link? So in, in other words, without, you know, talking too detailed because of course, of course there's some, yes. some of course, there's some, some level of security yeah. to it. Um, literally, the middleman between two different countries' military on training and educational stuff. Oh. So when, when we're writing plans and stuff, you know, what is the Australian Army doing? What do they think about this? I'm the guy that answers all those questions for the um, American Army. Oh, okay. So you're not 
bang bang and shoot them up. No, nope, I was at first as a young pup, but I, I moved away from that as I moved up in the race. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's dangerous. You don't want somebody shooting at you. Yeah. No, no, no. There's better things to do. <laughs> yes. No, you don't get to be this age with when people are shooting at you. Uh, no, I don't want to gamble. <laughs> Were you ever in, in the war zone? Yes, deployed three times. Oh my! Um, deployed to Iraq twice and Afghanistan once. It's amazing how how your mind and your and your mentality changes, and your alertness become very very alert. I, I was very fortunate that um, I didn't have any issues with PTSD or anything like that. You know, so you had to find a place where you could go and think normal in a sense. I mean, think about it. I mean, if you got to constantly be on the alert for possibly, I mean, anybody that goes to a combat zone and don't think of death is something's wrong with them before they went over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, death is real. Yeah, yeah death is real, real there. Yeah, you know, real. We, we walk out here outside of the street, we don't think about, you know, death in that sense. But there, I mean, every time you get in a vehicle or just walking from your sleeping quarters to the dining facility, you, I mean, it crosses your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but like anything, as people and humans, we're just, we're adapt. Yeah, it's it's amazing that you so you you did twice in Iraq and once and in, once in Afghanistan. And is it very different from Iraq to Afghanistan, or is yes it war and no? War? And only, yes and no, only because I was in 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 a different capacity. Yeah. So um, when I was a captain, I commanded. I was more out on the street, going through the neighborhoods, knocking on doors. Versus when I when I made um, major, then I was more in a a protected environment, you know. So only because of the the job. Yeah. Well, so now the higher up you go, the further back you are. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> and the poor private is paid less, and that's the one who. Up front. Wonder how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that's you know. In the old days, the Dark Ages, if you cap the king always rode in front of the army. Even in the Civil War, the commander rode in front of the army. Yes, you're right. And if you captured the king, you won. And in, in chess, if you capture the king, you win. Now it's the other way around. Well, leaders are out front, but you know. Sure they are. Yeah, they are. Sure they are. Sure they are. Listen, we have run out of time. You will promise to come back and visit oh, with us again? Absolutely. Uh, it's been a real pleasure getting to know you. We look forward to seeing you again. Aloha.